Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Today episode 93, finally after one week and a half, I got all the gear for the new studio and everything uh, is almost, almost configured, not exactly configured 100%, but it's enough already so that we can have another episode. So I just wanted to say a few words about all this. I ordered a lot of new gear, as some of you guys know already, because you joined the Telegram group. Uh, the Telegram group, of course, you can join it by opening a browser and writing t.me forward slash fu money, and you will uh, open a page where you can click the button and join out automatically uh, the Telegram group. And of course, I post all the news there. Although I was not recording videos for one week and a half or one week and a few days, I don't know exactly already but I was posting on the Telegram group, so you guys know what's been happening all these days, uh, uh, the last week and a half. And I've been ordering some new gear for the studio, of course, a new camera. As you guys can see, the image now looks much better. Uh, also the lighting and the new video mixer, the audio mixer and all this together, I hope will bring you a better experience. Uh, on this channel and also some satis satisfaction for myself because I'm producing better content with better quality, uh, a lot of new technology here. So I hope uh, the content can keep up to all the technology that I've been buying. Uh, but anyway, so I just wanted to say that I want to really, really apologize for all the days I've been out. I know you guys have been waiting for a new video for a long time already. So what's in fact uh, going to happen is I, uh, I plan to do a video every day as before from Monday to Friday, like a shorter update of what's the situation in Bitcoin's price action. On Saturdays, I also plan to have the live stream as before. However, I will not promise you as from today on that we will have a video every, every, every day because uh, from my experience for the last few months, I also got really, really tired of uh, recording a video every day except for Sundays. But, um, and I wanted to explain this also to you guys because the last, um, the last three months have been very, very uh, stressful because it's not just recording the video. It's not just those 15 or 20 minutes of the video. It's the entire work that we have to do, I have to do, uh, to bring the video to you. So it's not just recording, it's editing the video, it's getting the content, it's analyzing every day uh, for a few hours and see what's happening with Bitcoin's price action. So anyway, there's a lot of work uh, involving a 15 or 20 minutes video. And of course, I would love to be able to do it every day, but if I can't, I will just skip one day once in a while. And I hope you guys don't get angry about that, but that's that's life, you know, I, I have to do it because I cannot spend so many hours every day of the week, including Saturdays, of course, with a live stream, uh, doing this because it becomes very stressful. I was a bit sick uh, two weeks ago because I was editing this, um, uh, all the videos, and I had the big interview with, uh, which I hope you've seen already, with Ugly Old Goat. And that took me like two, three days in a row working the entire day editing that interview. Uh, of course, this is an uncut interview, but all the editing in the middle just to make the audio right and all the things that come together as a great video. So I had to do that and it was becoming too much. So I really had to take a break. In the meantime, I, uh, while taking that break, I um, used that time to get the new gear, configure everything you know, not being stressful, uh, just uh, doing everything in my own pace. So I hope everything came together. So anyway, let's go to the main point. Uh, and the main point, of course, you guys are waiting for the price action analysis. And of course, I will uh, today, I have to confess, I'm not really, really prepared. I'm going to look at the charts. I've been looking at the charts today already. But uh, the first insightful look I'm going to take to, at, at the charts is going to be now. So please bear with me and let's uh, get this all working. Also, because I, this entire setup is new, so I still have some, I, I have a lot of learning curve in, in, in front of me about all the gear that I have here. So if something comes out wrong, please, I apologize uh, as from now already, because uh, I'm still learning how to, you know, 
use this um, tech that I have in front of me right now. So let's see what happens. But please, guys, uh, don't be very harsh on me if I make any mistakes. So let's go directly to screen share. Here we are, guys, uh, in the price to time model. Let's see what's new around here. And I'm going to zoom in a bit for you guys. I hope the resolution is fine now because I have different resolutions going on here. So I hope you guys can see it. Um, so this is the second green week we have been having. So the last week closed exactly where we expected above the price of thirty four and a half thousand dollars. I said that we have we would have to close above that to be to become bullish. And of course, we closed it above that price. And now we continue to go up during this week. So it has been um, there has been two nice bars here on the price to time model. Uh, the second one is already touching the 20 week SMA. So that is a very, very good sign. Another good sign in the price to time model is that we finally went above. We are, we are now above the orange dashed line, which represents the level of the RSI post mid cycle top of 2013. You guys know we had a 75% and 75 correction during the bull run of 2013 and just after that first peak of 2013 we uh, decreased 75 percent in the price action and this orange dashed line represents the rsi at that level so we are now above that level of the rsi of 2013 which is very 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 good so uh last few days have been very very um bullish you guys uh, of course everyone is happy to see bitcoin finally going up and probably we will continue to see it of course with the due corrections on the way but nothing really crazy will happen i hope so let's go to the total market cap and see what is going on there so you guys remember that i, I was i was using the total market cap uh, just to understand the market a bit better in terms of, uh, you know, the big picture, uh, the grand schema of things. And so in this regard, we are now inside the dumb, uh, the dumb zone, as you guys know already. Uh, I guess you were uh, missing this, this uh, word already, the dumb zone. Uh, but in the total market cap, we went uh, to the precise point where I said that we would stop for the first uh, consolidation which would be the 1.6 trillion if you guys remember from the past few videos uh, I was analyzing this uh, total market cap and I said that the first stop for a possible going uh, reversal of the price action going to the upside and of course Bitcoin leading this because Bitcoin is king so it would be around the 1.6 trillion and here we are around the 1.6 trillion starting to consolidate the total market cap uh, so um, I guess the Pro Indicators framework really gives a nice idea of what is going on uh, or what are the possibilities in the future. Oh, but you guys know no one guesses the future in this channel. We just have the biggest probabilities explained. Uh, also the lowest probabilities too. But usually I tell you guys what are the biggest probabilities of something happening. And this is what we are now seeing so i said that we would stop around the 1.6 trillion and consolidate there before going up or having a small retracement so in this case everything is actually uh happening as we uh wished before uh that would happen and and this is the case right now so in this case uh the there's a squeeze also in the total market cap but we will see it on the bitcoin chart which we are going to check now so before that, before the four hour chart, let me take you to the monthly chart. And I'm just going to turn off this, uh, the drawings, the plottings I had here. If you guys remember, if you guys remember correctly, this candle, the last time I made a video and talking about the monthly chart, showing us some signs that wanted to go for a reversal of the price action. This green candle you guys have here, I'm going to zoom in a bit. This green candle, was red and the body was smaller than the previous candle body and i said if you guys remember correctly that this was due for a price reversal here at uh, the end of july or maybe august if that was the case uh, so in fact this happened faster than i was expecting 
really, really fast because I was expecting July to close as a red candle with, with a small body here, uh, looking like a doji or a small hammer. And then I was expecting actually this move to the upside to start in August, but actually this happened faster than I uh, was expecting. And I just wanted to show you this. Uh, so um, in fact, that price structure that we saw in the last few videos before this one was uh, due to tell us or was telling me that in fact, we were expecting a price reversal and it happened. So uh, if you guys check the videos, you will check uh, this candle here as a very, very small body and you will confirm exactly what I was saying now and that the price structure tells us a lot in technical analysis. So that's why I was saying that. So the monthly chart looks very, very good. We should be able, if not this month, at least in August for a continuation, at least to have a candle that breaks this line of resistance around the 41,000. Uh, if we are able to break the 40 to 42,000, of course, I'm expecting a bullish movement to the upside. And then we have to reevaluate where this move will take us. If we are not able to break the 40,000 now, this line of resistance where we are sitting, uh, then we will have to see where the one to four candle correction on the daily can take us. But I will take you guys there in just a minute. So this is the monthly. Uh, let me go to the weekly chart and see what is going on here. So you guys remember also uh, from the past few videos that I said the, 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 the weekly chart was the most bearish chart in my view back then, two, three weeks ago. And I was saying that I hate this chart because it looks so bad. And in fact, if you remove these two green candles from here, it looks very, very bad. But in this case, uh, the 50 period SMA was able to hold the price action and in fact catapult the price action to the upside in a fury, which is very, very good. We went up like $10,000 in just a few days. Uh, of course, the last day of the previous week and the days of this week have been great for that. So in the last eight days, we have been going up and this is a medium um, of around $1,000 a day. But of course, there were some days that we went up a lot more than that. So the weekly chart looks very good. I am very, very happy. Uh, I was also wishing for this when I made the previous videos that the 50 period SMA, the yellow line here, would hold the price action and send us back to the upside. Uh, I was not expecting this to be so fast. And I have to confess to you guys, because uh, this is very important also, the, the, you know, the time it takes to reach a determined level in the price action also influences what can happen. And if we go up too fast, uh, it might also trigger a bigger correction as soon as we have or as soon as one is due. So in this case, I was actually hoping for Bitcoin's price not to go up so fast and at least take some more time to break the 40,000, not have a big correction right now in the daily. We'll see the correction. We might have a correction now because of the uh, MRI top we have on the daily. But I was expecting Bitcoin to go not so fast as it has been going up. But in any case, you know, it's better to go fast, uh, to go up fast than not even go up. So in this case, I'm already happy for that. So that's a good thing. Okay, so the RSI is bullish. Of course, we are pointing up on the RSI. The volume is also increasing a bit after all this time, after the all-time high, almost before a few candles. So two, three weeks before the all-time high, the volume started to go down. This was already a sign that something was going to happen. And now the volume is again going up. So that's a good sign too. So the RSI is pointing up as also bullish. The MACD is coming out of a bearish structure. So you guys can see here, let me just zoom in a bit. Uh, so you guys can see the RSI better. We are pointing up here. And the MACD is now on the sixth bar, sixth light red bar, indicating that from this, uh, from six weeks ago, we started already to um, have signs that the bearish momentum was over and we were about to have a price action reversal. 
and now this is showing already in the MACD. You guys see the blue line here is already turning up while the orange is continuing to go down. So I'm, I'm expecting these two lines to cross, if not next week, the week after that, and that will confirm the bullish momentum of the uh, Bitcoin price action. So let's take a look at the daily. And here is the thing that uh, is a bit of a concern, but in any case, this MRI top has been going for a few hours already. We are past midday already. Uh, so only six hours and a half to go to close the day. And we are on a, an, an MRI top and we are still, this candle is still above the previous candle opening price. So I see that the bullish momentum is really, really strong right here, but I'm expecting that it's possible to have a small retracement again before we can actually cross the uh, next level of resistance, which, which is the 40 to 42K. So I'm expecting some time here before we can actually cross that resistance. So a one to four candle correction on the daily chart is not out of, uh, you know, it's not an extraordinary thing. I'm expecting it to happen. So let's see how this evolves. But uh, it's very, very possible that we have uh, two, three days of reversal here just to consolidate before we can actually break the resistance of the 4042K. So the RSI is, of course, uh, on top. Um, let me just zoom in a bit so you guys can see it better. So we have the RSI on top, really, really. It's now again uh, coming out of the overbought uh, area. The MACD on the daily is already bullish. You guys see here the bars are all green and going up and the blue line obviously having a bigger distance uh, from the orange line since yesterday. So that is the daily uh, chart. I like everything in the daily chart, all the days that we have been going up since this previous uh, low here around the $29,700. And I bet that it's, it's going to be very, very hard to go back to those levels or below those levels. And I said also several times in Twitter, if you are waiting for 20K, you might get a chair because you will feel much more comfortable waiting forever so that we go again to 20K. Uh, so the daily chart looks very good. The only thing actually I don't really like uh, in the daily chart is the MRI top, but we have to live with them. So it's possible we have a small retracement before breaking the resistance. But let's check the four hour chart. Uh, I'm not expecting a big, big drop. We also had an MRI top on the on the four hour chart a few hours ago. Uh, so this was yesterday. And you guys can see that even having an MRI top on the four hour chart, we didn't go very, very low. And also we have already the 20 period SMA, the green line here already um, showing signs of supporting an eventual price retracement. So I'm not expecting this 20 week, uh, 20 period SMA to be broken to the downside in a fury. I hope this will support the price and I see it supporting the price. So I'm not expecting a big, big retracement in the next few days. But as I said before, because of the daily chart, we are also on an MRI top. It's very possible that we have a few days of stagnation or even a bit lower price action, but I'm not expecting a big, big correction uh, coming from this MRI top. So uh, let's see, we are already uh, very, very extended in time. I'm just going to take a quick look at the Dixie. And this is good news. I like this news. I like the dollar going back down again below the trend line that we had before this red line here. I like it going below that line and I want the dollar to continue this move to the downside. And that is very, very important for Bitcoin to um, be stronger and have a healthy uh, price action reversal from the previous low and continuing to go up. So let's see how that goes. But I like this move by the dollar coming back down again. And I just hope that on the weekly, the MACD next week will be crossing again the blue over the orange. That will be very, very good. But if we can keep the price action, if the dollar keeps the price action below that trend line, it's a very good indication that we might be in order to retest the support again around the 90 on the Dixie. So let's see how that evolves. And um, of course, I will 
make all my prayers so that the dollar goes below the 90 that would be amazing so let's see gold gold showing some strength after coming back down here and finding support on the white trend line as you guys know this white trend line has been supporting gold's price for a long long time already so let's see how that continues i'm bullish on gold of course i hope that the lowest of the year was around here you guys know this already this was my low for the year 2021 and since then gold has been finding support on the trend line and continuing to go up with the small uh, with small retracements and this was an mri top uh, on the weekly we also had the one two four candle correction but since then we have been going up steadily again so gold i'm bullish gold i hope that gold also keeps going up as the dollar goes down because that will be a very good sign for bitcoin too it means that people are trying to fight or hedge against the hyperinflation of the dollar and uh, that sets us in, um, you know, the mindset of the people trying to hedge against the hyperinflation of the dollar is a sign in itself that the dollar is in trouble. So that's a good sign. Uh, the S&P keeps going up, but beware, guys, beware, because next week, and we have, we have already this week an MRI top warning, and next week we will have an MRI top on the S&P. So... I would be careful and see, uh, evaluate uh, the positions I have on the S&P and try to understand if there is something I can uh, make to prevent a possible drop on the S&P 500 and, uh, you know, uh, not lose any money or at least not be in the negative side in the positions I have. So guys, beware of that. We are about to have an MRI top on the S&P, so just take care care of your positions and i guess that's it so for today and for the first i'm just going to leave this here on the for our oh i just forgot the bitmax funding rate before i go let me check the bitmax funding rate the bitmax funding rate is completely neutral right now the premium is negative so there is not a lot going on here but i just wanted to show you guys one thing on the bitmax funding rate uh here hmm Let's load the MRI and let's see. So since then, since this period here, since the first big drop of Bitcoin that we have been having, overall, we have been having a negative BitMEX funding rate. And you guys know that this, of, of course, is a result of the price action going to the downside and people being afraid of Bitcoin continuing to go down. But I'm expecting the BitMEX funding rate to flip and... Uh, you know, in accordance to what the price action of Bitcoin is doing right now. So this is not flipped yet, which is good. It, it's, it's good for the bullish case, but I'm expecting the BitMEX funding rate to flip to the upside or to be positive. Uh, and that will not be so good for Bitcoin price action. As you guys know, it will create resistance uh, on the spot market, uh, stopping it from going up so easily as... Uh, if this was not the case of the flipping here of the BitMEX funding rate. So I'm expecting this at any time, especially if we are able to break the forty dollars to $42,000 resistance. And with that, guys, I will, of course, leave you now. Let me just go back and stop screen share. I hope you enjoyed this uh, after this pause that I had in the videos. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope you enjoyed the new quality of the image, the backgrounds, the lighting and all that. If you have any comments, please leave them below. I will be reading all the comments as you guys know and responding to everyone if these are not 1000 or 2000, of course, <laughs> but we, I think we have not reached those levels yet. So in any case, don't forget to join the Telegram group and I will have new uh, on the screen, um, you know, URLs with all the things that you should subscribe to if you want, of course. Uh, of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content and also put leave us a like there because it will help with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you want to comment anything, just leave it below and I will read for sure. So guys, it was a really a pleasure to come back to the videos on YouTube and I hope you enjoyed this uh, um, content of today and also the quality of the video itself. So I will see you guys again tomorrow. Have a good one and bye-bye.